Welcome to today's video where we explore mechanisms of programmatic advertising, dive into the complexities of third-party cookies, and discuss the intriguing concept of the cookie apocalypse. Join us for an honest and insightful conversation with MEF project manager Ross Flynn. Ross runs the content and advertising working group and co-runs the DCB working group, bringing together the many stakeholders at MAP from this ecosystems. Before MAP, he managed a team responsible for all ad operations for a programmatic advertising vendor specializing in smart TV data. Hi, everyone. We're excited to get things started and discuss an exciting topic of programmatic advertising. Ross, thank you very much for finding time for participating in our episode. We're so excited to have a fruitful conversation about the topic. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, a lot of uh, telcos might not be familiar with this topic, and I think it's worth knowing about, even if you're not specifically in the industry. Um, so yeah, thank you for having me. Let's delve deeper into the questions that we prepared for you. We have yeah. 10 questions, so you can just pick any number from 1 to 10. Well, I'll go, I'll go 9. I'll go 9. 9. Amazing. Can you share a specific example of a campaign that exemplifies the power of programmatic advertising in achieving remarkable results? Yeah, well, I can talk a little bit about my, my previous job. It was a pretty cool product. It was a company called TV AdSync. And they were a programmatic ad vendor. So they're buying ads programmatically, as, as I explained. Um, but the cool sort of differentiator they had was that we had access to smart TV data in the USA. We could see who was watching certain shows on uh, certain televisions. And we were getting this directly from the manufacturers of the TV themselves. We did a lot of campaigns with entertainment clients. We can not only see if they've watched your a previous show that, that you want to advertise an upcoming season for, but we can also prove out if they tuned in after they've been exposed to digital ads. So you think about it like you watch a show, let's say you watch a History Channel show, and uh, then we know that you've seen that, and then we buy media programmatically and serve you ads programmatically for the new season of that show. And then we can prove that you watched that that new season as a result. So that was like a, a cool product. And I think that's kind of a good example. I mean, that's just one nifty way of, of how programmatic advertising can be used. But a, a bunch of other companies are doing cool stuff. And, and a bunch of the telcos, like the big operators, are starting to use their audience data because they have really, really good audience data, right? Like they've got like location data, data usage and all that stuff. And they're they're using that and selling it uh, to, to serve people programmatic ads, basically. Amazing. Are you ready yeah, for the yeah. next question? Yeah, let's do it. I'll go for number two. Could you share how the MEF approaches the challenges and opportunities of programmatic advertising for its members, or it doesn't do it? I left that previous job and, and joined MEF as sort of the content and advertising guru. And so I, I work with very closely with our members on discussing, uh, you know, advertising trends and, and also like content trends, so like Envas and, and stuff like that. And uh, we have a, a lot of players in there for, for Envas. And we do working groups and white papers and I interview them for discussions of like and stuff like that. So th there are some programmatic guys in here. A lot of them are using like what's what's called Google's uh, Google AdSense, which is like Google's a, a DSP is basically just a platform where you can serve ads programmatically. So a lot of them are using Google's DSP. I think the main sort of discussion is that data is key. Data is the most important thing. So telcos are realizing they have really good data. So some of them are starting to serve ads programmatically. Uh, with their data. And also, I think it's just important to know for your own business, if you want to market your own business and advertise your own business, maybe you should be, you know, serving ads programmatically. So th th that's the main things that come up. Okay. The next question yeah. is... We'll go one this time. Oh, this one is tricky, but oh I think quite exciting. Programmatic advertising inventions. If you were to invent... A programmatic advertising related gadget that would benefit businesses, what would it be and how would it work? Oh, that's a good, that's a fun one. I like that one. I think a way to absolutely be certain that you're not serving your ads to bots. Uh, mm. That's a, a huge, huge problem. It's it's not just a problem in advertising, digital advertising. It, you're seeing it in, in telco with stuff like artificial inflation of traffic and stuff like that. Now that I've become familiar with both the telco world and the digital advertising world, I think that digital advertising, it's a bigger problem. I think if you could come up with a way to verify 100% that you're serving to an actual human at, at any given time, that would be something really, really good. <laughs> okay. okay, number, let's just go in order. I'll go number three. Number three. 
Yeah. Okay, this one is fun. The emoji challenge. Can you describe your typical work day using only emoji? Let's see if we can guess what your day looks like. You can send me this emoji via email right now. And then oh, okay, okay. Yeah, let me check over. now. <laughs> I like these ones. Okay, uh, I'll write you an email and I'll explain. Let me just look at the emojis. I, I don't even send that many. I won't send the sleeping emoji. That would be bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> well whatever is true is true <laughs> <laughs> i think I'll, i'm gonna keep it really basic and i'm just gonna send you this one it's just the um i've just emailed it it's just the smiling emoji but he kind of looks like he's listening and at MEF, we we like to listen to our memories a lot we, we're, it's not me talking about digital advertising or programmatic advertising it's our members at the end of the day who guide things so I would just say me listening, uh, smiling patiently and, and listening to what the members say. Thank you for sending me a lot of positive vibes provided with math. <laughs> okay, next question is... Four. What exciting opportunities do you see for telcos and mobile operators in the realm of programmatic advertising? How can they capitalize on this trend? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a bunch of things they can do. Um, as I said... Their audience data is key. Recently, uh, four of the major European operators already started joint, an advertising joint venture, basically. I'm not all the details are out, but the basic idea is that they'll, they all have a 25% stake in this joint venture and they will use their audience data, presumably, and, and serve ads programmatically. And in doing that, they're basically taking on like the big tech, you know, like the Googles of the world and stuff like that. That's the main thing that they should be doing. And, and they seem to be kind of getting that that uh, idea. And I think they'll, they'll find it easier than they expect, uh, sort of antitrust wise, because they apply for this joint venture and it was approved very quickly by the EU. The EU is keen to sort of even the, the playing field a little bit and make it so that it's not just big tech who holds all of the sort of programmatic advertising opportunities. So I think, yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing a much more diverse playing field going forward. I think it's an exciting journey and there are a lot of prospects in the future. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, not just the telcos. Any Anyone who holds data now is realizing that they're, they're basically sitting on a, a new uh, additional revenue stream. And obviously, they, it, as long as it's all be do, being done in a privacy compliance way, which I'm sure they are, then I'd say, you know, more power to them. Let's go to number, have we done 10 yet? Programmatic advertising slogan. Woohoo! If the programmatic advertising had a catchy slogan, what would it be? Reach your customer at the right time when they're in the right mood. <laughs> Why do you think it's important? A big thing with programmatic advertising, you know, we've been we've been talking a lot about audiences and data and stuff like that. What, one of the good things about it is you can sort of fine tune your campaign to be really, really effective. So you can if if you know your audience is more receptive at a certain time to an ad, then you can serve it at that time, or you can serve it when it's a certain you know daylight or any number of variables. And I think marketers really, really like having that sort of flexibility. You, you can't always control how your ads are being presented in the world. Uh, that's just a fact. But I think programmatic advertising offers the most sort of customization. So I think that's why that would be the slogan. Let's go eight this time. Could you provide insights into what the future looks like for businesses and advertisers in the mobile advertising landscape? I, I keep bringing up data again and again, but it's so important. But one thing is that audience marketers will find it harder to find audience data, basically. There's a lot of regulation in the background that is making programmatic advertising harder and harder because what's called audience identifiers, so ways that you identify clicked on your ad, uh, they're starting to go away. So are you familiar with like the third party cookie on a browser? So it's essentially a third party cookie. All that is basically is just like a little pixel that when you click on, when you get to like a landing page, let's say you buy something on Amazon Perfect. and you get to that screen that says, thank you for buying this. Then it, it appends a, a pixel to, to your, you know, your device basically. So going forward, our advertisers know like, oh, Tatiana bought this this device. So that, that's how it works. So that, that that's being done away with. So there's going to be no, the, it's called the cookie apocalypse. Uh, and it really is a, an apocalypse because no one's quite sure what the landscape will look like afterwards. So I think uh, the mobile advertising landscape will offer less precision for marketers. They won't be able to reach Tatiana at the exact right time they might want to. So I think it'll be a little bit more difficult and people will have to get more creative with how they target people basically we got like three left i'll go seven office superpowers 
If you could have one superpower to help you in the business world, what would it be and how would you use it to your advantage? Oh God, that's a hard one. Well, we didn't say that it would be easy. No, no, no. <laughs> Me personally, I would like to anticipate what people want before they before they ask for it. That would be a good power. Uh, that's something that I'm trying to get better at. It's something at MEF that we try to do a lot because, you know, we have to listen to people. So we're, we're member-led. So our members decide everything that we do. And sometimes it, it can be a, a big challenge is helping members talk because some of them might be shy. I don't know. Uh, so I guess it'd be great to anticipate what they wanted before they even knew how to how to say it. So there you go. And uh, let's finish that with the last question. Last question. Uh, Whoa. Okay. Yeah. How does uh, MEF play a role in the world of advertising and mobile technology, in your opinion? Oh, that's a good one to end on. We try to be a neutral platform as possible. So we we give our there's plenty of opportunities for our members to market themselves, to speak on panels and stuff like that. But I think the fact that we are a, a neutral platform, so we don't have any, like I don't have any particular stance, I just facilitate everyone's discussion. I think that that gives uh, our advertising players and our content players a lot of credibility in what they're talking about when they go up on stage because it's coming from a reputable source. We're totally against any sort of fraud or anything like that. So the members are working on some documents and stuff like that. So you can expect a advertising fraud framework uh, document, which is essentially a, a Bible to ca call out the different kinds of advertising fraud that are happening right now and, and show you what to avoid, basically. A lot of stuff, uh, thought leadership, a lot of uh, genuine kind of work in terms of calling out fraud and also looking at the positive side of things not all negative it's not all fraud like genuinely trying to build a sustainable uh, ecosystem so i think it's a, it's a bright future for myth well thank you very much on this positive note we want to say that we're very grateful that you've participated in our interview it's great thanks Tatiana.